Okay, so you probably guessed now that I am home. I got home uh, yesterday morning at about four o'clock. And what I'm doing, four o'clock in the morning, uh, what I'm doing is we're getting this uh, windrower ready to go. There's a chain in there that needs to be changed. It's a number 80. I got the chain, I just need to get it off and get new links and things like that, changing the oil. Timothy went for filters. Yeah, it's Sunday. Um, but anyway, all the footage that I have for North Carolina is on this telephone. And for some reason, my telephone is not talking to my computer. So I'm gonna have to upload this through the editing software that I have on the computer. So that's what you're gonna get. Uh, I do have a corn update and that's what you're gonna see right now. It's gonna be kind of lengthy. Uh, you know, with me, damn bee just laying on. It's gonna be kind of lengthy, maybe 15 minutes long, but I hope you enjoy it. So here you go. So, what's the importance of fertilizer and, and clean, uh, clean fields? You know, a lot of people complain and bitch and moan. Oh, my God, use chemicals. I'm talking not, not farm folk, but city folk. Oh, my God, you're chemical farmers. You don't know what you're doing. Uh, you should do it organically. Well, this is an organic plant. It's green. <laughs> I do not. It is actually a GMO. It is a uh, Roundup Ready Liberty Link. It is a very stacked variety. There is no technology that I cannot put into this because uh, it's all in there. Root worms, all that stuff. So if I was going to grow this very same field of corn without anything but um, Mother Nature taking over and doing it, this is what it would look like. Well... This is exactly what it would look like. Wow. No herbicide. Obviously, we have a thick mat of grass. And uh, the fertilizer that is there has been uh, sucked up by the grass. And uh, looks like some smart weed there. And some other little things. There's some lamb's quarter or whatnot. And right where the uh, herbicide was put down. Right there. It's clean. Got a... A little bit of grass here and there, you know, just a blade of grass, which is acceptable. But there's no little button weeds or anything coming up, like fall panicum and other lamb's quarter and things like that. I could really cock over your day. Uh, but this is what it would look like. Now, if I was, this actually has fertilizer on it. It has dry fertilizer on it, and it actually has uh, the liquid fertilizer as well, because we put it on. There is a lot of fertilizer here, but because of all these weeds that are in the middle here, they're just taking all that nutrient away, starving the roots for oxygen and uh, whatever else, <laughs> every nutrient that's in there. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what's happening here. Now, if I was going to do this the old-fashioned way, I would have cultivated it, knocking the weeds out, uh, putting a little air in the soil, and uh, keeping the... Uh, keeping it looking the way it should you know it would never be it would never look like that if I just cultivated it but it would look a hell of a lot better than it does and we've got this this has always been a problem in these fields pennyweed this field produces pennyweed I hate pennyweed they used to grow wheat and alfalfa in this field uh, and other things of course but pennyweed was always always the culprit there and I can see, when I get down here, right down here, um, this, this corn's about, I don't know, right along the edge here. I'd have to say it's seven and a half, eight feet tall. You go on in the back, it's nine, ten inches, t ten feet tall. But you can tell when it's just about to tossle because the leaves at the top will point straight up in the air as it starts to unfurl that tossle. And I can see... And let's see if you guys can spy it. But right up in there. Where is that guy? It's right there. Right there. Right up there. There's tossle. So it's starting to tossle out, which is a good thing. Uh, which is a very good thing. So I'm quite pleased with the uh, with what it looks like. I'm very pleased with what it looks like. The brace roots are coming down coming out getting ready to hit the ground uh yeah this is a 106 day variety of corn 
And uh, I'm very happy with the way it's turning out. With the way it is. Oh, oh, what's that? What's that? It's peeking through, pointing straight up in the air. That tossel is right here. It's right here. So, yeah, so I am back. Corn's looking good. In about three days, this stuff will be two feet taller than what it is right now. You're going to see ears coming up, coming out, along with the tossel. They come out together, if you didn't know. Uh, if you're not farm folk, then uh, you wouldn't know, but that's just the way it is. Uh, when it tossels, the ear pops out, and then that silk is exposed, and then the pollen starts flying around here, and it's really itchy to go into a field of corn. It's like that. So, yeah, I'm very happy with the way it's looking. I mean, here's an example. Here's your, here's your top, your, your silk, here's your ear, and then there should be, like, right there. See it? Oh, let me get my hands on there. There it is. I'm not going to unfurl it myself, but there it is. Now, this will not pollinate itself. It needs its neighbor. So, its neighbor, oh, this is throwing two ears. Hopefully, these don't develop. Uh, it's going to develop two ears. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to step into the jungle here. There's a little bit of a spacing here. Um, here's a golf ball. We sprout those all the time. But, yeah. I don't know why I'm able to get in here this easy. A high traffic area. There's, there's tracks. Looks like somebody came down through here with a car and, and ran this over. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, we are... We are there. We are getting there. I told Teresa that uh, it would be tosseling before we got back, and it should have been. But this stuff is eight feet tall, and it's going to go another couple of feet tall. I like tall corn, personally. I want my ear to pop out right where these ears are popping out, right? The shoulder height. It's going to be right here. You can see it's a little pregnant right there. That's where your ear set's going to be. Not here. It's going to be here or here. You got to, oh, yeah, right there it is. See that? Here's your little, your little, little ear gonna come up through there. So here it's at shoulder height. The reason I wanted at shoulder height versus uh, waist high is because of the high population of deer that we have. The very high population of deer that we have, and on this everywhere here in New Jersey, uh, the deer will come along and it'll bite that silk off. And when they bite that silk, that's it. It's a dead ear. And as you can see, there's deer tracks. So, yeah, it's quite amazing the way this corn looks. I'm very proud of the way it's coming on, you know. I haven't grown corn in five years. It was 20, 2015 was the year that I planted all the ground in the hay. The 2014 was the last year that I had grown corn and soybeans. I have no ambitions of doing uh, soybeans again anytime soon, but uh, definitely enjoy the corn. So there it is. Look at that. See, what I had done was instead of making a corner with the corn planter, I have a 12 row corn planter, I picked it up and then I made my ends turn around, went down, and then I came into the corner. So we got this V slot, which is nice to see how your weed control is going to be, uh, you know, in here. And the corners generally don't have as good a weed control as, say, the center of the field. This corn is sick how tall it is. I'm a solid 5'11 and 3 quarter inches. I am not quite 6 feet tall. I always tell everybody I'm 6 feet tall, but I'm just a sea hair short on that. And this here is 9 feet tall, 8, 9 feet tall. I'd say a solid 9 feet, 9, 9 and a half feet. Um, there's some tossel poking up over there. And it is, there is no starvation for nitrogen. If you are lacking moisture and nitrogen, uh, these leaves here would be dead. They would be dead, and uh, they're not dead. They're actually quite green and happy. You can see some yellowing there, but that's kind of normal. Uh, these are getting a little more sunlight because of this V here, so they're not dying off. But I'm going to go down to the next field, because I like to walk through here. And see what we've got. I don't know. Oh, wow. Now, this is shaded from the trees, so you can't expect it to be. Oh, no. Hear that deer in there? There's deer in there. 
we have jimson weed. Okay. Well, what's nice about this is the deer are eating the jimson weed. Oh, no, they're not eating the jimson weed. They're eating, this is uh, velvet leaf. So they're eating the velvet leaf. I thought they were eating the jimson weed. I was like, oh, that'll kill them. That stuff's highly poisonous. So obviously we have a jimson weed issue here on the corner. Uh, I don't believe it's going to be in the field. Uh, looks to me like herbicide was not applied there. The fertilizer is definitely there, but the herbicide is not taking that out. So we have that issue to deal with. Yeah, herbicide isn't working so good here. It could be just Cody was the one that sprayed this. I did not. And here's the line right here. There's the line. So, boom, you can see the difference between the herbicide herbicide there clean field no herbicide we got some weed pressure in there guarantee you there's only going to be a very small amount of ears that pop up out of here and are going to be little spindly nubbins that don't amount to anything yeah herbicide didn't get applied there we got grass we got lambs quarter we got all kinds of oh my god poke weed obviously jimson weed and velvet leaf that's in there a little bit of grass so all in all, though, oh, the penny weed is in there. Ooh, it's a rock. So that's what happened there. Uh, didn't get the boom on in time. And if you look up there, you can definitely see the boop, the stairs. So, yeah. Nice. So that's my corn update. When I left here, the corn was eight, nine inches tall. That's it. Eight or nine inches tall. I've been, I was gone a solid five weeks. And this is what it looks like. So we're looking at a pretty decent crop so far, unless something happens like it completely dries up. Uh, but we just had three and a half inches of rain yesterday and a little bit today. And it's not muddy. It definitely soaked in. And uh, it's looking like the pollination is going to be right where it needs to be. Plenty of moisture, humidity and it's not going to be dry so the ears should be full and good pollination go on <coughs> when it does pollinate in the next couple days now new varieties of corn have a three three day window three to five day window in which they can pollinate so it's rather short years ago it was like seven to ten days years ago but the new varieties they really they've got that pollination uh, window quite tight. I don't like that. I'd rather have a longer pollination. Now, if you see some of the other farmers out here on YouTube, they will plant six rows of, or 12 rows of one and 12 rows of another variety to elongate that pollination. So they'll put like 110 and 114 day, or 106 and 110 together. You know, or even 108 and 110, get two extra days in there, in that uh, in that field for pollination, and uh, so that's more of an insurance policy. Uh, it ensures that it will pollinate properly. Poor pollination, it'll look good. The ears will look okay from the outside, but when you peel it back, you're gonna have rows with missing uh, missing uh, kernels in it, which kills your yield very quickly. So here I'm going right to where <laughs> that just looks pathetic, doesn't it? That is actually a lack of nitrogen. Uh, Cody put the nitrogen on here with the 60 foot boom. And instead of, I mean, he must not have backed it all the way down to this point before he headed in because that's the way he went. Uh, what did I put on here? I sprayed something. I think I sprayed Roundup on this. I can't remember now. It doesn't even matter. I'd have to go back and look and see what I had done. But uh, anyway, looks like my asparagus, wild asparagus is going to go on for another year. Um, I need to get a brush hog going here. Oh, my God. Actually, brush hog's a, a bad word around here. I'm actually going to mow this the grass and the terraces and bale it and sell it. Because if you brush hog it, you get nothing. So, but anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my corn update.
This is just one farm. The other farm looks as good, if not. Yeah, about the same. Anyways, I'll see you later. Oh, and if I seem out of breath and out of shape, I probably am. I've been in a tractor for the last five weeks. No movement, just in the tractor. No walking, nothing. Nothing, just in the tractor. Plus, talking, holding the camera, and uh, explaining what you're doing. It's kind of hard to breathe that way. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.